In Star Wars The Clone Wars, the Jedi Council actually figure out that the Sith, Count Dooku, is the one that created the clone army for them, but they don't really do anything about it as they think revealing this information to the public will just kind of cause chaos and decline in morale for the war effort. But what if the Jedi actually put a plan into place once they found out this information? That's what we're going to go over today. Hope you guys enjoy, and let's get right into it. Our story begins inside of the Jedi Council chambers on Coruscant, as Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi are briefing the Council on what they recently learned. Over the last week or so, the Jedi have been searching for clues as to the disappearance of Jedi Master sifo Dyas, as well as the creation of the Clone Army. Initially, Jedi Master Plo Koon was dispatched to a moon orbiting Obadiah, where he found the destroyed shuttle of sifo Dyas along with his lightsaber. The Jedi were told long ago by the Kaminoans that sifo Dyas was the creator of the Clone Army, without permission of course from the Jedi Council. But the more the Jedi looked into it, the more it seems like sifo Dyas was set up. And after more days of hunting for clues and evidence, Anakin and Obi-Wan learned a man called Tyrannus aided in the creation of the Clone Army. And while on Obadiah, the Jedi finally learned the truth. Count Dooku is Darth Tyrannus, and he is confirmed to have helped with the creation of the Clone Army. So now, as Anakin and Obi-Wan stood in the Council describing what they learned, Grand Master Yoda was telling the Council that an enemy created an army for them. The question now looming in the room was this. Should the Jedi tell the Republic people of this discovery, or should they keep it hidden? Mace Windu spoke up, saying that if this became known to the citizens, then public confidence in the war effort would plummet, and therefore the Jedi and the Republic could vanish. The Separatists would win, the Republic would have to surrender if they found out that the clones were created by the Sith. Yoda agreed with this, saying that no one, not even the Chancellor, should know of any of this. Everyone was nodding in agreement and preparing to leave the meeting when Shakti suddenly remembered something. Not long ago, Clone Trooper Tup experienced some sort of disease that made him turn on the Jedi. Shakti said that, although unlikely, it is possible that the clones were created to take down the Jedi. To the Council, this didn't make much sense because why wouldn't Dooku just use the clones immediately to kill the Jedi and take over the Republic? Why create the clones at all? unless they had someone on the inside, trying to rise to power. But either way, the Council agreed that Shakti has a valid point, and so they stayed in session. They decided that if, or when, the Sith Lord makes himself known to the Jedi, they will immediately pull all Jedi from their battle stations and send them to a hidden planet without telling anyone. This operation would be called Operation Tup, and the Council assigned Shakti and Kit Fisto to be the designers of this project. They would figure out the message to the Jedi, the planet to go to, and how to get everyone out of the temple. This was of course only in case of emergency, if the Sith Lord does reveal themselves. The Council was in agreement. Should the Sith ever reveal themselves, the Jedi will be ready. And now we flash forward to Anakin Skywalker, facing Chancellor Palpatine in his office, after Palpatine just revealed a terrible truth. He is the Sith Lord the Jedi have been looking for. Unfortunately for Anakin, in this moment as his world crumbled around him, he is not thinking about the clones, nor about the Jedi, not thinking about anything except for himself. And ultimately, Anakin resorts to his training, and he takes off for the Jedi Temple to inform the Council about what he has learned. Inside of the Temple hangar now, Anakin lands and begins telling Windu everything. Palpatine has revealed himself to be Darth Sidious. This is the single most important moment of the entire war, and Windu stood here now with Kit Fisto, Aegon Kolar, and Seizi Tin. The Jedi Master told Anakin to wait in the Council Chambers until they return. But Kit Fisto spoke up now. A while back, he was assigned with Shock T to install an escape plan in case the Jedi discover the Sith Lord. The plan is to evacuate Jedi across the galaxy, and Kit said he has to stay in the temple to organize this evacuation with Shock T. There is a possibility the Sith are more than ready for this moment, and so, the Jedi must be ready too. Windu was conflicted, as he wanted Fisto with him, as Fisto was an excellent fighter. But ultimately, Windu agreed. He then looked to Skywalker, and told Anakin he has a chance to earn his trust here and now. 
telling Skywalker that he will be replacing Fisto on this mission. Anakin thanked Windu, and together they got into the shuttle heading for Palpatine's office. And while the Jedi flew through Coruscant, Kit Fisto found Shakti, and the two of them began implementing their Jedi evacuation plan. They had no idea whether or not the clones could truly turn against the Jedi, but it made more sense now than ever. If Palpatine is the Sith Lord, that means he aided in the creation of the clones, and as Chancellor, he has direct control over the Grand Army. So together, Shakti and Kit Fisto activated the emergency signal going to all of the Jedi across the galaxy. And it read like this, Attention, all Jedi are now being redirected to Ahch 2, effective immediately. Tell no one, leave now. And it was sent out to cross the galaxy. On Cato Nemoidia, Plo Koon veered his starship into space to his hyperspace ring. The clones were confused, but they continued their fight. On Utapau, Obi-Wan called R4 and did the same, flying away without alerting anyone. The same happened with Ayla Sakura on Felucia, Yoda on Kashyyyk, Kiati Mundi on Megiddo, Depa Balaba, Caleb Doom on Collar. All across the galaxy, Jedi suddenly diverted from their battles and took off without warning, without telling anyone. It did leave a lot of battles suddenly favoring the Separatists, but it was all for the greater good in the most vital moment of the war. And inside of the temple, Shakti and Kid Fisto got with the rest of the Masters in here and prepared evacuation from many of the hidden away Jedi transport ships. Fisto and T made sure to have hundreds of transports on the Coruscant moons, ready for whenever they are called upon. The transports landed outside the back entrance of the temple, and younglings, instructors, priests, anyone who was not a warrior was loaded onto these shuttles as they took off into hyperspace, one by one. The Jedi were ready. And in his office, Darth Sidious could feel the four Jedi approaching his office in the Force. But something was wrong in the Force. There was a sudden urgency on Coruscant, in the temple. Sidious would have loved to have more time to figure out what was going on, but now at his door were the four Jedi, as Mace Windu told him he was under arrest. Palpatine looked to Anakin and put his hands out, begging him to see the truth. It is the Jedi who are taking over. He told Anakin he has always only done what is best for him, for the Republic, and he asked Anakin to please see the truth. But Mace Windu was having none of this. He told Anakin the Jedi were trying to stop the war that Palpatine started. Windu told Anakin to see the truth. Palpatine played both sides. He's responsible for trillions of lives lost. And he told Anakin that together they can save the galaxy here and now. Bring peace. True peace. Anakin did see the truth, realizing Windu was right. And so he ignited his lightsaber with the other Jedi. Palpatine is the traitor. But Palpatine smiled, igniting a lightsaber, and with his mind he felt into one of his statues, then pulled a second saber right through the back and heart of Sazie Tin, killing him immediately. This distracted the Jedi, and suddenly Sidious spun through the air like a madman, cutting easily through Aegon Kolar, before turning to Windu and Skywalker with a laugh that sent a chill down their spines. Now, Mace Windu and Anakin Skywalker confronted the Sith Lord, clashing their blue and purple sabers against his dual red ones. It was a fight years in the making, as Windu and Palpatine never truly got along. They merely worked together to fight a war. But now, both of them have had an opportunity to finally eliminate the other. If it was just Windu versus Palpatine, it would have been a fairly even fight. But with Anakin here, Palpatine knew that he truly was outmatched. Even so, he spun his two red sabers through the air with unreal speed, blocking, parrying every strike from the two Jedi. He had a plan, he just needed to fight them a bit longer. Palpatine flipped through the doorway into the other room, shooting lightning at the Jedi. It was easily blocked, but it gave him time to run into the room and continue the fight. Lightsabers clashed, sparks flew, and the three combatants soon found themselves at the window. Palpatine was on his last legs, giving everything he had to fight these two Jedi, and finally he had them right where he wanted. Palpatine spun through the air, using a force push to send Windu backwards, and he locked lightsabers with Anakin. While in the lightsaber lock, Palpatine sneered at Anakin, telling him that he made the wrong choice, and because of this, Padme will die. Palpatine continued, saying it was him who put the dreams in Anakin's head, and it is him who will kill Padme. 
This made Anakin unbalanced and beyond angry, and gave Palpatine the opportunity he needed. Anakin swung way too hard, and he was off balance. He missed, giving Palpatine the opportunity to lift him with a force choke, making Anakin go unconscious, then throwing him out of the window. Palpatine realized the only way to win this fight was to lose Anakin, and Mace Windu looked at Palpatine, then looked to Anakin who was falling to the ground. Windu had to make a choice, save Anakin or try to kill the Sith, and he chose the Jedi path of helping those in need, running to the window, leaping headfirst out of it. He dove through the air, trying now to catch Anakin before it was too late. Sidious watched them go, then walked to his communicator. It was time, and he turned it on sending a new order to all clones across the galaxy. Execute Order 66. And all across the galaxy, clone troopers turned their attention from droids to their Jedi commanders, only to be met with a sudden realization. Their Jedi commanders were gone, nowhere to be found. On every planet, clones searched everywhere they could, but the Jedi truly were gone, this made no sense. And as Sidious stood in his office, feeling into the Force, waiting for the dark wave to indicate the fall of the Jedi, it simply never came. Sure, some Jedi died because they couldn't make it out in time, but the huge majority were just gone. And soon, Commander Oppo contacted him to say that the Jedi Temple is vacated. Sidious didn't understand, but Oppo repeated himself, saying the Jedi Temple is empty. There were no Jedi here. They were just... gone. No one is there. Sidious blasted his desk with lightning in frustration, wondering what could have possibly happened. Where could they all have gone? There was also another thing he did not know. While he was speaking with the clones, trying to figure out what it was that was going on, Windu had saved Anakin just before hitting the ground. And after he saved Anakin, Windu contacted Shakti and Kit Fisto. The two of them were still on Coruscant, waiting to evacuate the Jedi that went to fight Palpatine. They also found and kept Masters Keller and Beck and Balin Skull here with them. Both of them were at the temple today, and they found Windu and Anakin on the streets of Coruscant. With Anakin now back awake, he saw Windu, Shakti, Kit Fisto, Keller and Beck, and Balin Skull. And Anakin realized Sidious must die, as he is the true danger to Padme. Together, they got into a speeder, flying up to his office once again, this time much more prepared. As Sidious ended discussions with Oppo, he was preparing to send clones to track down every Jedi to every possible planet. He had Oppo and the others of the 501st searching the streets of Coruscant trying to find Windu and Anakin. They would find all the Jedi. They would be defeated. But before Sidious could send the orders to hunt down the Jedi, a speeder pulled up to the now broken window and six Jedi jumped out, igniting their lightsabers. Sidious ignited his two sabers as well once again, and flipped backwards, trying to escape, knowing how outmatched he was. But Anakin grabbed him with the force, pulling him back into the room. He stood now to fight, and the six Jedi moved on him. It was never any competition, as Sidious stood no chance against all six, with five of them being masters, and the other being the chosen one. Sidious tried to fight, but ultimately, exhausted from his previous fight, he died screaming in anger as he was cut down by all of them, with Skywalker landing the final strike. The Jedi got back into their speeder, taking off into the air to avoid the clones. They got to a transport, and they knew they were right to evacuate, as the clones truly were turning against them. Throughout the galaxy, there were maybe 1,000 Jedi that couldn't get out in time, and they were gunned down by their men. But overall, the Jedi survived with ease, and the Sith were dead. In time, as the Senate was in chaos, the Jedi would speak to the Senators that were in favor of bringing an end to this war. The Jedi would present their evidence that the Sith, including Palpatine, actually created the clone army with intent to kill the Jedi. The clones were set up by Palpatine to bring chaos to the galaxy, kill the Jedi, rise as Emperor at the end of the Clone Wars. The new Interim Chancellor, Bail Organa, would shut down Order 66 with his control as Chancellor. The Jedi would be safe. On Ahch-2, the six Jedi that killed Palpatine would soon land among the 9,000 Jedi that survived and made it here. Windu would hold a meeting with every single Jedi, telling them what happened, and the Jedi would collectively decide to stay off of Coruscant, pull out of the Republic. The clones would serve as the new police force for the Republic, while the Jedi keep peace 
for all people of the galaxy. Anakin would be with Padme as she gave a healthy birth to twins, and they would grow up in a peaceful galaxy under a rebuilding Jedi Order. And folks, I that that's our story for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. I did just watch the other day this episode of The Clone Wars, Season 6, where Plo Koon hunts down the missing shuttle of Sipodius, and the Jedi actually discover that Count Dooku is the one who created this army for them. And the Jedi, mo or Jedi Order in that moment is like, oh my god, what do we do? You know, we gotta play this Sith game. We gotta just keep doing what we're doing and wait for our opportunity. And unfortunately, when that opportunity does come, when Anakin reveals the truth to Windu, they just, you know, aren't thinking at all. They just go try to kill him. Everything goes wrong. Clones turn against them. So I wanted to take the path of almost what if the Jedi were smarter or just more prepared because, you know, they are kind of naive. They really are just arrogant for the most part, and they truly think they're just going to, I don't know, I, I don't know why they didn't prepare, but a lot of it is arrogance and overconfidence. So what do you guys think of this story? Having Shock T and Kid Fisto kind of organize this Jedi evacuation across the galaxy. I thought it was fun. I enjoyed this one. Appreciate you guys for watching, listening, and yeah, thanks. Let me know what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video.